Hi, so today I want to talk about one of my favorite problems in physics, and this is problem 3.10 from Kleppner and Kalenka's Classical Mechanics book, and it's about the capstan, which is this device that you might use on a ship, for example, where you have this wooden cylinder and then you wind this rope around the wooden cylinder, and you have some fixed force that you need to hold with the rope, which is a load force TA, and then the question we're interested in is for a fixed load force TA, which you can imagine as being attached to an anchor or something. What is the holding force TB with which the sailor needs to hold on to the other end of the rope in order to prevent the rope from slipping around the cylinder? So we want to show that the hold force TB equals TA e to the minus mu theta, where mu is the coefficient of friction, and theta is this angle subtended by the rope on the cylinder. So the way that we're going to solve this problem is using a, a technique which is, which is fairly standard in this sort of situation, but which you may not have seen before. And that is that we're going to consider a, a differential slice of the rope. So let's do that. Uh, what that means is that let's consider a small slice of the rope like this. So Let's uh, get a different color for the rope over here. So here's the rope. The rope is being wound around the cylinder, and we're considering just a little slice of the rope. So this is just a piece of that other diagram that we had before. So here's that, and we're interested in, for example, the case where there's just a small angle d theta. So here's a small d theta, and we're looking at the change in the tension on the rope over that tiny angle d theta. So let's call this, call the force acting on this side, t of theta, tension as a function of theta, and the tension acting on this side, t of theta plus d theta, because now the angle is increased by d theta. So in fact, this angle here should be d theta over 2. So d theta over 2, d theta over 2, this is d theta difference. OK, so let's say that theta is increasing. If we look back at our picture, say that we're measuring theta from this hold force Ta. So theta is being measured from the hold force, which is bigger than the load force. So we expect the force to be decreasing as theta gets larger. So T of theta plus d theta should be smaller than t of theta. So if this force is smaller and this force is bigger, then the rope wants to slide this way, which means we also has a, have a force of friction, which I've drawn a little too curvy. We have a force of friction acting this way. So the force of friction is acting on the rope to try to prevent it from moving. So now we have to do a little bit of geometry to decompose the elements of t of theta and t of theta plus d theta along the horizontal and vertical directions. So let's see, if this angle is d theta over 2, then if we complete this triangle here, then this angle, since the 90 degrees plus this plus this have to add up to 180 degrees for a triangle, then this is 90 degrees minus d theta over 2. And now let's make a triangle for our t of theta. So this is 90 minus d theta over 2, which is complementary with this angle. So that means this angle here is d theta over 2. And the same argument applies on the other side for t of theta plus d theta. Good. So let's now add up the components of the forces acting, which are all along this up and down direction, where we call this, like call this y. So in the y direction, let's add up all of the forces. So 0, since we're enforcing equilibrium, 0 is the sum of all the forces. There has to be a normal force acting on the rope from the cylinder in order to keep things balanced. So there's a normal force minus t of theta times the component in the y direction. So t of theta sine d theta over 2 minus the same argument applied to the other side, t of theta plus d theta, and the same angle, in fact, sine d theta over 2. OK, so we've summed up those forces. 
and set those to zero. Now we're going to use the small angle approximation. So small angle, small angle approximation. So sine d theta over 2, since this is a small angle, we're taking it to be infinitesimal. This small angle means that the sine of the small angle is roughly the small angle itself. Good, so we have this guy. And now we're also going to use another approximation. Since to first order, this equation, first order means we're only writing down the equation up to differential quantities like d theta. We won't keep anything like d theta squared. So to first order, this t of theta plus d theta, you can imagine Taylor expanding that. That's like t of theta plus t prime of theta times d theta. So that's a sum of two terms, one of which is proportional to d theta. Then we're multiplying that by something which is also proportional to d theta. So the second term that goes like d theta squared, we can drop. And when we drop that, keeping only terms to first order, we get 0 equals the normal force minus t of theta d theta over 2 minus another t of theta d theta over 2. Add those d thetas over 2 and we get t of theta d theta. So that's our y equation. Now let's consider the forces in the x direction. So in the x direction we know that the friction force, when it's at a maximum, is going to be given by mu times the normal force, and that's acting in the positive x direction. So in the positive x direction, we have force of friction, which is mu times the normal force. Then we have plus t of theta plus d theta times the cosine of d theta over 2. But again, we'll use the small angle approximation. The cosine of a small angle is roughly 1, t of theta plus d theta. And now minus, because we have t of theta pulling in the minus x direction, which is also times a cosine of d theta over 2, which I'm not writing, because cosine of d theta over 2 is roughly 1. So this is our equation for equilibrium in the x direction. So now we have two equations, and our goal is to obtain an expression for the tension, t of theta. So let's just combine these two. So combine, let me switch colors one more time. So combine, which basically means I'm just plugging in our expression for the normal force, which is t of theta d theta. So now we have mu t of theta d theta plus t of theta plus d theta minus t of theta equals 0. Now we can imagine rearranging this, so I will move this term to the right side and then divide by d theta, and then I'll also move down just a little bit here so that gives us some more room. Then we have t of theta plus d theta minus t of theta divided by, oops, made a stray mark there, divided by d theta equals minus mu t of theta. And now we're going to take the limit as d theta goes to 0. So limit as d theta goes to 0. But you'll recognize from calculus that this expression on the left-hand side is exactly the derivative. This is exactly the derivative t prime of theta when theta is small. So as we take that limit, this means t prime of theta equals minus mu t of theta. So this is a differential equation for t of theta, which we know how to solve. This is telling you that the derivative of a function is equal to a constant times the function itself. Let me move down again. So you can either solve this by separation of variables. So for example, for example, you could write t prime of theta as dt d theta, so then we would have uh, dt equals minus mu t d theta, and you'll do this thing like you did in AP Calculus, where you get all of the t's on one side and all of the thetas on the other side, and then you would have dt over t equals minus mu d theta, and then you would integrate both sides, and you'd get a logarithm over here, 
and a minus mu theta over here, and I'll leave the details of that to you. But the conclusion is that when you solve this equation, you find that it's solved by an exponential. The exponential is t of theta equals some constant, which I'll write as c, times e to the minus mu theta. And you can check that if you differentiate this with respect to theta, you get minus mu times the original function back. So now all we have to do is pin down this constant c, but we know from our original drawing here, see this was the drawing, remember theta is measured from this point where it makes contact with the cylinder. So when theta equals zero, the tension has to be ta. So that's our initial condition. The t, t of zero, not theta, t of zero equals t sub a. So using that condition, we've nailed down what c is. And now we have the final answer, t of theta equals t a e to the minus mu theta. This is exactly what we were asked to derive, and it should check against all of our intuitions. It does, indeed. So as we increase either theta, which is this angle around which that the, the rope is wound around the cylinder, if we increase theta, e to the minus mu theta gets smaller. So the amount of force that I need to hold it with, that's t b, the amount of force I need is smaller. That makes sense. If we round this around more, then I'll need less force to hold it. If the friction likewise gets larger, then I need to hold on with less force. And if theta equals zero, so there's no cylinder at all, then it's just a straight rope. And the amount of force that I need to hold on is exactly the force exerted by the load. So this checks against all of our intuitions. It matches what Kleppner and Kalenko told us to show, which is great, another good check. And therefore, we've solved this problem. So thanks for watching.